Welcome to the final challenge in the JSON APIs and AJAX course. And today we're going to be looking at how we can actually send data to a server. And we're going to be using the XML HTTP request again. So what we're essentially going to do is send a JSON string to a server and it's this server right here. And what this server will do is it'll bounce it back to us and we'll get a response containing our initial request body. So we're going to be using the XML HTTP request again, and I just want to have a look at this again. So I've created one right here, and I'm just going to log it just so we can have a look at what will happen. So I'm going to press play. And this time, what, what it'll do is once it sends it off, it'll change this re ready state right here to tell you that it's finished. It'll change the status right here to tell you how it went. And then what it'll do is it'll set this response field right here to the value that the server has returned. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is we need to open up this request. So I'm gonna call rec.open again. Remember this um, oops, open method right here is what we use to open a request and set some properties. So we wanna set the first property which is a method and when we're sending stuff out this method is post last time we used get this time we're using post second argument again is the url of where you're sending to and in this case i have stored it as url right here so i'm just going to put this in and the third argument tells us whether we want to run it asynchronously or not and we're going to go with true because we don't want this to disrupt our code flow now, when we're sending, an important thing we need to do is we need to set a request header. And what this request header does is, if you look right here, it kind of gives the receiving server some information about how to process what we send them. So we set a request header using this set request header method for an XML HTTP request, and we'll call it like this. And this is a key value pair. So the key we're giving it is content type because that's what the server is looking to know about. And we're going to set the value right here. I'm just going to copy and paste it from here. But this value just tells it that it's going to be in a JSON format with UTF-8 encoding so the server knows how to process the data once it receives it. Okay, so remember how I said that this uh, ready state will change. There's, so what happens is we can have this field right here called on ready state change. And like the on load, we can set this to a function to run when the ready state changes. And this is useful for processing the output that the server has returned once it's finished. So what we do is we'll say rec dot on ready state change. And yeah, I really recommend you look at the one with the get XML HTTP. That'll be really useful for this as well. And what we want to set this to is a function. And again, you can assign it to a variable that refers to a function, but you can just create one right here like I just did. And this function doesn't take in any arguments. Now there's a few more things that we need to check. And we know that the ready state has changed, but the ready state has a couple of values. So we have unsend, open, headers received. And this kind of shows you what stage the operation is at. And we want to make sure the operation is completed before we try and process the out the response. So we want to make sure that this state this ready state is at four. So what we can do is we're looking at this ready state right here. So we'll say rec dot ready state. And we want to make sure that this is equal to four. Now this only indicates that the operation is completed, not that it was completed successfully. And that's why we have this other field called status. And what we need to do is we need to make sure that status is set to the correct value as well. And if you look here, status is an HTTP response code. And what we're looking for is if we look at the successful responses, we have 201 right here and 201 is says created and what that means is the post request was successful and since we're doing a post request we want to make sure that 201 has been returned to tell us our post was successful so we want to make sure rec dot and this time again we're looking at status 
we want to make sure rec.status is equal to 201. And now, what if these two are correct, it means that the response will have been completed. And this response field right here will have the server's response. Now remember that this response will also be a JSON string. So before we can do anything with it, we need to convert it to a JavaScript object and we need to pass it. So I can say let object oops equals and then we want to call the json.pass method remember pass converts a json string into a javascript object and the response or the string will be stored in this response field so we want to pass rec.response oops i just spelled this wrong i'm just going to correct this and what we can do is i'm just going to log it but we can essentially do anything we want with this object after this Okay, cool. So now we've opened it up, we've set the header, and we've told it to do what to do once it's completed. But we also need to send it off with a body. And this body needs to be a JSON string. So what we need to do is, if we're working with a JavaScript object, we need to stringify. So remember, json.stringify takes in a JavaScript object, and it converts it into a JSON string. So I'm just going to put two things here, so I'm just going to say name, and I'm going to put Bob or something, and I'm going to say message, so this is in our object, hello world, like this. So this is our body, so it's a JavaScript object, and it'll be stringified into a JSON string. And finally, we can actually send this request off, and we do this by calling request.send, but this time, since we're sending, we need to pass in an argument into the send method. And that'll be this body right here. So we pass in a JSON string to send us the argument. And we've called this body. So I'm just going to put body like this. Now, if everything should work, which I don't expect it to first time, it should send this off to the server. And the server will return this. And it'll get logged as object. So let's have a look. So I'm going to clear this. And I'm going to run it. So yes, it's it's successful. So firstly, if we look at the XML HTTP request thing, we've got a status of 201, and we've got a ready state of 4, which is exactly what we were looking for. And the response has been set as well to a JSON string. Perfect. So then what it's done is it's logged this response. It, sorry, it's converted it into a JavaScript object, and then it's logged it. And we've basically got returned what we sent off. Although bear in mind the server has attached an ID field as well. I'm just going to drink some water now. So, so we've essentially worked out how to send a JSON request. So now let's have a look at what we're doing here. So the user will enter a name here. And when this message gets pressed, it gets assigned to this const called username. And what we need to do is we need to send it off to the server. And then we're going to be adding a suffix like this, like loves cats, as well with our object right here. Server is going to return this. And we're going to put the reply from the server right here in this box. So the first thing we need to do is create an XML HTTP request. And this time I'm going to go with the variable name they used here. So xhr equals new. And then I'm going to copy this because I know I have issues with spelling. So I'm just going to put it in like this. And now we need to open this. And remember, we are doing a post. Our URL has been put into this URL field right here. And we're going to be running it asynchronously. Next thing to do is set the header, and I'm just going to copy this line right here. So this is essentially the exact same thing as this. So we just told it the content type is a JSON with UTF-8 encoding. Next thing we need to do is set the on ready state change, and I'm going to copy it again. So when the ready state changes, 
we want to run this function right here. And we want to set, we first want to check if the ready state right here is four to indicate that it's completed. So xhr.ready state is four. And we also want to check that the status right here is equal to 201 to indicate a successful post. So I'm going to say xhr.status is equal to 201. And if that's the case, what we want to do is we want to pass it. So I'll say let server response. Oops. Equals json.pass. And remember the field that's set to the response is this response field right here. So we want xhr.response. And then what we need to do is we need to put this into this box. So I'm just going to copy and paste this line just to make it easier. So what it does is it puts the, it, it selects this box right here with the class name of message. And that's the first box with that class name of message and it sets its text content to, and then the server will return a username field, which will provide in our object that we send and a suffix. And it just puts those right here. So the next thing to do is create our body. So I'm just going to say let body equals, and I'm just going to do what they've done right here. So I'm just going to send the same one off. So we call json.string if I remember, and then we give it a JavaScript object. So I'm just going to copy this and paste it in right here. So it, this just has a username field and a suffix, which is loves cats. And that's all we'll get tagged here. So now this will be converted into a JSON string. And finally, we just need to send off our request. And remember, we give it the JSON string to send, and that'll be body right here. So everything looks okay. So I'm gonna try it now. So I'm gonna say Bob and send, and it'll take a while to do it, I think. So far, there is no response, which is worrying. All right, let me see what's going on. Well, I don't know. Um, I think it's worked. It's just not showing right here. Anyway, the test passes, so Oops, at least we know it's been done correctly. So yeah, that is the end of the JSON APIs course. So yeah.